Thank you, Kira. covenant to be eager for ministry to go in a new direction, to embody God's unconditional love for all people, to grow spiritually through prayer, Bible study, mutual support and caring, and participation in our church's outreach ministries, to worship God in spirit and in truth to welcome extravagantly, to ask in faith, believing it will happen, to be on the road to tithing our time, talents, and treasures, to build our temples to God in mind, body, and spirit, to be at peace with one another and speak no ill of anyone to strive to be in one accord with the mission and ministry of Jesus Christ, to think it in our heads, believe it in our hearts, and definitely do it with our hands, to be at the heart of the community with the community at its heart. Those who are able, please let us stand for our processional hymn, number 543, when the roll is called up yonder.
Would you join with me in the call to worship? We are Christ-centered, mission-driven people gathered together to worship God. We look forward to the time when God will take control. God will reward those whose names are recorded in the book of life. Our righteous God is with us right here, right now. Let's pray. Loving God, your people are gathered here, eager to hear a word from you. This is the time we have set aside for worship. This is a place where we can be away from the turmoil of the world's demands. We come into this holy place to let your spirit touch our hearts. We come to see our brothers and sisters in Christ. We come for healing and to share one another's burdens as well as our joys. We struggle to wrap our minds around you, God. We know that you are loving and merciful, but we also understand that you are a righteous judge. Sometimes we worry that we will face some kind of punishment. Help us to have faith that your promises are true. Help us hold on to the knowledge that our names are written in the book of life and they cannot be erased. Most of all, God, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. Open our minds to receive the special message you have for each of us. Let our songs and our prayers reach your ears. Accept the gifts we give out of a spirit of generosity. And hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us turn into our bulletin in the section that says we are praying for. Once again, there will be a time in this prayer that we will ask you to silently say each name out in, in prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for this day. It was 39 degrees this morning. And Lord, I'm just so thankful I am living in a time and a place where we can turn on the heat. Let us be mindful there are those who don't have shelter. Be with them. Be their heat. Help them to get through the coldness of this winter, of this season. But let us be grateful for whatever we have. Let us be thankful for whatever we have. As someone says, it's not a question of whether or not the glass is half empty or half full. It is to be able to say, thank you, Lord, we have a glass. So let us be thankful for whatever we have. And dear God, we thank you for our wonderful church family, for the testimony that Lois was able to give. There are so many opportunities for us to share in testimony what a great church family we are. And for this, we truly thank, thank you, God, for letting us be who you have called us to be. And now, dear God, each name that is said in silence, please answer and hear our prayer. Your scripture reading today comes from the Pew Bible on page 774. It is in the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. At that time shall arise Michael, the great prince who has charge of your people. 
and there shall be a time of trouble such as never has been since there was a nation till that time. But at that time your people shall be delivered, every one whose name shall be found written in the book. And many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. This time I've been continuing to preach out of the book of Daniel, which our Bible, in our Bible study we've been taking a really good look at. Daniel is very, very complicated. If you've really noticed, if, you, if you've been halfway hearing some of the sermons that we've been lifting up, Daniel is not sometimes easily understood. And there has been this misinterpretation sometimes about this is your name in the book. So we're going to try to add, hopefully, a little clarity to this. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for allowing us to have open minds and open hearts. Please remove any obstacle that will stop us from hearing directly from you. Be it me, my voice, be it this message, whatever it is, let it be removed so that we leave this place knowing we have heard from you. And this is our prayer. We anticipate it, and it is so. Amen. Now, we've all heard of this thing called the Book of Life, a book that will have the names, each name who is going to receive some type of final judgment. The bottom line to all this is that you want to live such a life that you know your name is in the book. There's not a question about it. You know that your name is in the book. Have you ever gone to a party or something or some kind of place where you had to go and, and find out if your name was on the list so that you can get in? Have you ever tried to sneak into one of those kind of parties? I mean, I know no, none of the Christians here would ever do that. But the bottom line is that if your name wasn't on the list, you still tried your best to get in. But guess what? Most of the time to no avail. So how did you really get in in the first place? You probably had to know somebody. You had to know somebody to get your name on the list. Well, guess what? Who do you have to know to get on or get your name in the book of life? Who is it that you have to know? Jesus. This is not a big mystery. You've got to know Jesus the Christ. But the optimum question is, do you really know him? But maybe more importantly, does he really know you? That's a hard question. You know, we can know somebody. You know, no, no disrespect, I'm, I just got to pick on John for a second. Our youngest is getting ready to have this Halloween thing, and he's going to dress up. And, and please, I'm telling you, he's doing it to, to the detail, right? He's going to dress up as Don King. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, John, Don King? Oh, yeah, he's got the wig hair going on. He's got the big, you know, I love America sign, the big dollar. Oh, he's doing the Don King. And I just thought about that. You know, I know Don King. You know, he was that gangster thug on East 55th Street before he became this unbelievable millionaire over all of boxing. We knew him as a thug, okay? But do we really know him? We know about him. I don't have a relationship with him. We know of people we don't have a relationship with. So if you know Jesus, it's not the fact that you know Jesus, but it's the fact that you have a relationship with Jesus. Repeat after me, I have a wonderful relationship with Jesus. That's so critical. You want your name in the book? Then work on having this wonderful relationship with Jesus. For in our scripture, Daniel speaks of a time of trouble for his nation. So let me ask you this. Is our nation in trouble? I ask you with complete sincerity, 
This is not going to be a political discourse, but this is going to be a spiritual question. Are you praying for our nation? Not those prayers of judgment, not those prayers of ridicule, not those prayers of woe, but prayers of thanking God for his presence in our nation. Prayers of thanking God for his power in our nation. Thanking God for his peace in our nation. We need to pray for our nation. Now we all may have these personal thoughts about what's going on and what's not, but that's not important. What's important is that our collective thoughts and prayers will be for the betterment of this world. To have a more meaningful relationship with God. So let us pray for our government, pray for our leaders, pray for those people who are in power. But more importantly, let us pray for our own homes. Repeat after me, I don't know about you, but my home needs prayer. That's what you do. Our homes need prayer. Our homes need prayer. We need to pray for our homes. Your homes need to be places of sanctuary, places of blessedness, places where you know no matter what goes on in this world, you can come home and find love, peace, and chocolate. Oh, excuse me, I didn't mean to put that in there. But you've got to make your place, your home, where the presence of Christ is being felt. And hear me, if you have yourself, me, myself, and I, is the only thing in your home, you are not alone. Because the love of God greets you. I want you to know, I got to tell you this 10 second story. My very first apartment, you couldn't tell me I wasn't somebody. I had my own apartment, my own key. And Jeff, yes, I did. I put a mirror in that place so I can look in that mirror and say, boy, you're looking good. My own apartment, my own key. And I want you to know, every day I put that key in there, I said, Lord, thank you. And it was just such a pleasure to know that I had my own. There's something special about having your own. I didn't own it. I rented it. But guess what? It was mine. And you know what else? I knew that when I put that key in the door, that God was going to greet me. Because I prayed, Lord, be present in my home. Do you say that prayer? Do you say that prayer of thanksgiving that you have a home? Are you living such a life as your home is a place where God will be? Are you living such a life that your name will be in the book? I'm here to tell you, you cannot make people righteous, but you can live a righteous life. And you can't make them as bad as you want them. Lord, if you would just please quit having these people be imbeciles. You can't do that. But you can look in that mirror and see yourself. And Robbie, what does that say over and over again? That you, you've got to. You are the prettiest, most handsome, best thing God ever created. You need to wake up each morning thanking God. Woo, we thank you, Lord. You did a good job with me. You need to do that. And I'm not talking about vanity. I'm not talking about selfishness. I'm talking about because you and I realize that your name is in the book because you know the Christ. And that's what it's about. You are special. You are marvelous because somebody will say, I see Christ in you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I see Christ in you. But this passage speaks of knowledge increasing and running to and fro. Who here has a, has a smartphone? Pull your smartphone out real quick. Who has a smartphone? Pull it out. Pull it out. Ben, pull it out, Ben. Come on, pull that smartphone out. Pull it out. Yeah, everybody see a smartphone? Ben has all the knowledge in the world in his hand. Put it up there again. He has all the knowledge in the world in his hand. 
this nation, this world, we are in a place now that knowledge is everywhere. It's in the palm of our hands. And yet we as a people are so many of us are just running to and fro with all this knowledge and no wisdom. All this knowledge and no wisdom. This is the time now for us to pray for one another. Quit running to and fro. You ever feel like you're running all your life and you're just standing like on a treadmill? You're constantly running. You're still not going anywhere. You're still in the same place. And then all of a sudden you look down and say, Woo, I look like a muscle on that leg. It's something positive. When you're running to and fro and you find out that you're running to and fro with your finances, you get paid on Monday, you broke on Tuesday. You're running to and fro with your health. One day you're waking up and you're aching all over. The next day you're waking up, you're jumping out of bed. Running to and fro. You've got to quit running to and fro. Be still and do what? Know that I am God. Be still. Quit running to and fro. Know that your name is in the book because of the way you are living. Hear that. Know that your name is in the book because of the way that you're living. Remember this. I've said this a hundred million times. It'll be a hundred million plus one. The greatest sermon ever preached is the one that's never heard. It's you. It's your walk. It's how you greet people. What you say to people, how you live, it's you. Repeat after me, I am the greatest sermon ever written. Yes, you are. So I ask you, is your name in the book? Is your name in the book? The answer is yes. Because I know Jesus, and Jesus knows me. Amen.
things. First of all, please let us take time this very moment and let us give Kevin an applause of appreciation for who he is, the great ministry that he's about, and make sure that you come and let us join in the reception and let us please give him the accolades he is justly deserving of. Repeat after me, it is a blessing to have you, Kevin. That's, wait a minute, I told you four. Those of you who are counting, that's only two. Okay, number three, isn't this guitar choir the bomb? Oh, I shouldn't say that. They'll tell me to say, I'm not supposed to do that anymore. Isn't this guitar choir the best? How's that? Amen, come on now. And repeat after me, Jeff Dewar, you the man. <laughs> Let us hold hands. Dear God, we thank you so much that our family has one hand holding another. We thank you that we are a praying church, that we understand that our name is in the book. As Daniel said, it is sealed. For the, it is sealed because of the way that we have lived. So let us continue to live such a life as we know our name will be in the book of life. Let us stop running to and fro. And let us make sure that we take time to appreciate and love ourselves and make our home a place where you reside. This we give thanks and all who agree with this will say together, amen.
He taught me how. Happy day.